it's up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children. We have an exciting lesson today about a little boy from Morocco, 11 years old, and it is no darkness at all. And of course, you know that as we start, we need to hear what God's Word has for us. And we're thankful that you tuned in today, and I know how you love these stories. We're going to be reading from Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. And also Proverbs 2. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart unto understanding. And you know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That means, and this is also in chapter 9 of Proverbs, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the, of the holy is understanding. Also in Proverbs 16, 16, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? and to get understanding rather than to be chosen silver. So gold speaks of Christ as the one that is holy in his holiness and beauty. That's why we see that the street is pure gold in heaven and the city is pure gold. As we learn about gold, it speaks of Christ so it's better to get wisdom from this book than to try to lay up treasures on this earth. So we need to get in this book. That's why we want you to understand God's word. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom means that I have an awe and respect and adoration for the one that is holy, that is our wisdom. Jesus Christ is wisdom. So we must seek these things and obey his commandments. That's the greatest wisdom of all the world. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come before thee today, thanking thee and praising thee that thy greatness is unsearchable and we praise thy marvelous name. We pray for every person that is listening today to know thee as personal Savior. We thank Thee that Thy Word says that we are to come before the very throne of grace to find help in time of need. And every person that is living today needs the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior that has never accepted this gift of eternal life. And for those of us that have received Thee, guide us and direct us to bring honor and glory to Thee in each and everything we do and say and give us a hunger and a thirst for thy word. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Those of you that have been following along with us in all of our missionary stories, you know that the th theme that we always have is, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. And this is Matthew 18, 14. You need to memorize this Bible verse. Also, our Bible verse since our story that we're starting today is a wonderful story that no darkness at all. And God's word says in John 8, 12, this is your Bible verse that you're to learn today. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So since this is no darkness at all, we're going to be teaching you God's word because these children were Mohammedans. They believed in a God called Ali. They lived in Africa, a country called Morocco. 
and they believed in a god called Ali, and Mohammed was his prophet. And they believed that if they prayed to the dead saints that followed these men, that they would hear their prayers and they would answer them. And they prayed five times a day. And these children need to know the truth of God's word. And we are giving these out so they may hear, that they may be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. This is why we are giving out these truths. These are true stories. And as we learn about this little boy from Morocco, you're going to see the great need that we have of getting out the Word of God to those that have never heard the truth. So since Hamid was 11 years old, it was his duty to watch the goats. He had watched goats since his father had died two years before. His mother had married a, his stepfather, and he had an old wife also. And the old wife hated these children because she didn't have children. And the stepfather beat Hamid and his little sister, Kinza. And Hamid could take the beatings if they just wouldn't beat his little sister, Kinza. And he was thinking about the good times that he had when his father was living. And he also was thinking about his mother. His mother was sad, and he did not know why she was sad. You see, they lived in one room, and they slept on mats, and he did not know why she tried to keep little baby Kinza from the old wife and his stepfather. So he saw his little friend come running, and he thought, what is the matter? Something is wrong. And he, when he got close, he said, oh, no, nothing is wrong. Your mother just wants you to meet her at the well. So he started out right away, running to where his mother was. And when he got there, there she was at the well to draw water. And you know, that's how they did. They had to draw their water. They had to bring the buckets and carry it back. So he ran to his mother and she told him, she said, the old wife thinks I have come just for water, but come with me. I want to show you something. So she put the water buckets down and they went away to a place where she could lay little Kinza down on the ground. And she said, show Kinza these flowers. And she showed the flowers to Kinza. And when he did, he saw her eyes didn't blink. And he said, oh, mother, Kinza is blind. She said, yes, we must go to the saint's tomb and pray. So they went to the saint's tomb. And when they went to the saint's tomb to pray, this is where their leaders were buried. And they prayed, they bowed down to the ground. They would put a piece of paper on the little bush that was there by the tomb. And they would pray for this, whatever their need was. And they prayed that she would receive her sight. After they were finished praying, she could not see. And Hamid said, well, maybe God doesn't care. That's why the saints don't answer our prayers. So all of you that are listening, those of you that have followed along with us know that there is one God, and that is Jesus Christ is in heaven today, praying continually for each of us night and day. Jesus goes before God the Father to pray for us. That's why we are told as true believers to pray in Jesus' name. He says, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it 
you. John 16, 23. So we have a great high priest, which is Jesus Christ, and he makes intercession for us night and day. And if they just knew the Lord Jesus Christ, you see, Jesus Christ is the only God. He is the Savior of the world. And God sent His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. Then He went back to heaven, and He's preparing mansions for us. He also is praying night and day. And the Spirit of God that dwells in our hearts makes groanings which cannot be uttered to Jesus, and then He goes to our Father. Because, see, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And we have the adoption also. We're adopted into the family of God. So here we have this marvelous, wonderful Savior. And every other religion, every other God is dead. There is absolutely no person that you can believe in that will save you there is only one Savior, Jesus Christ. And He knows every language. He loves us all the same. That's how we can pray to Him. And that's why we know that He is the only true and living God. So if He had have known this wonderful Savior, He would not be afraid. But He was afraid in the dark. So He went back to watching His goats. And as he came home that evening, it was dark. And he was afraid in the dark because he had been told that the evil spirits are in the dark. But he knew nothing about the light of the world that is Jesus Christ. And as he was getting close to his little hut where he lived, he heard the old wife yelling at his mother. She said to his mother, you wicked, deceitful, lazy one, give me that baby and let me see why you tried to hide her away from us and why you go to the saint's tomb to pray. You see, someone had told that he, she had gone to the saint's tomb to pray. So she got the baby, and as she got the little baby, she looked her over, and after she did, she said, she is blind. And she threw her back over in her mother's arms, and she said, wait till the master comes home tonight. And the little baby started crying because she was treated cruelly. So when he came home that evening, it was not the same as he always came when he came home. He came in, and instead of coming in screaming and yelling the way he usually did, he came in and he motioned for his food to be put on the table without speaking. And when he did, they gave him a bigger pieces of bread than the rest of the family, and they would dip this bread in the sauce. And when they dipped it in the sauce, they would say, in the name of Ali. And that was to keep the evil spirits away. And after they had eaten, they sat down, and he was sitting smoking his pipe, and he was very quiet. So she got a candle and brought little Kinza over to him. And as he was examining her and looking at her, he saw that she was blind. And he said, after a while, he didn't yell and scream like he always did. He said, take very good care of her. And the mother said, why? He said, because people are sorry for blind children. And I know a beggar that will, we can rent her to him every market day, and she can make us lots of money. Not that we can beg because we're profitable people, we're honorable people, but she can make lots of money for us. Sure enough, whatever he said, they had to do. And it was Hamid's duty every market day 
to take his little sister to the market, sit her by this beggar all day long. As she was sitting by the beggar, the fleas were all over her legs. The flies would bite her, and the dust made her sneeze it was horrible. And the sun was so hot. He couldn't wait until it was time to go pick her up. And when they call from the mosque, they call from the mosque to pray five times a day. When they called at four o'clock, he could go pick his little sister up. And he would try to have something for her every day on market day. He would try to get a dough ring. And also, he didn't think it was a sin to steal, so he would steal something for her or beg something for her, and he would try to get some kind of sweet, sticky candy because he knew when she got home, all that she would have for supper would be water and bread. And if she made lots of money that day, she may even get a crushed plum. So he couldn't wait to carry his little sister, and he began to love her more and more because he felt so sorry for her. One night he thought that he could not live. He heard his stepfather and the old wife and his mother talking while he was lying on his mat. And the stepfather said to his Keynes's mother, the beggar is leaving and this is the most money we'll ever get for her. And he will take good care of her. Oh, the mother said, but she is so little. She will die. And the old wife said, a blind child is better off dead. Oh, poor Hamid couldn't sleep all night. He was trying to think of a way that he could save his little sister. The next morning, after he felt like he hadn't been asleep all night, his stepfather came, and of course, he kicked him and said, You lazy creature, it's time you're out watching the goats. He didn't have to change clothes because he didn't have a change of clothes. And also, he just washed his face and his hands in a bucket. When they sat down to eat the bread and drink the coffee, his mother, with her eyes, motioned for him. And she raised her eyebrows and he knew that she needed to talk to him. So he saved a crust of his bread for his little friends to watch the goats. And he waited for his mother to go to the barn to crush the corn that they needed for meal. While she was there, he hid behind the barn until she got in there. And then he came and he says, Oh, mother, have you thought of a way to save Kinza? Oh, she said, Yes, I have thought of a way to save Kinza. He said, But how? I laid awake all night trying to think of a way. She said, You my son are going to save Kinza. I, but how can I? She said, I want you to listen to me very closely. When you were a baby, your father wanted to go to the saint's tomb. And after we went to the tomb, he wanted to go to market. And when we went to market, we walked and my feet were, had blisters and you had a fever, walk it in the hot sun. And we slept in the yard of an inn. And she said, I washed you in one of the fountains to try to get the fever down. And your father went to shop. And while he was gone, some lady came up to me and said, is your child sick? Oh, she said, yes, he has a fever. She said, come with me real fast. Let's go to the English nurse. She will give you medicine. Oh, she said, the English are rich, and I have no money, and they live in fine houses. She said, not this one. This one lives in a house like we do, and she does this in the name of the one she calls the Lord Jesus Christ. I think he is her saint. And I went down this little dark street. 
and this little narrow street, and I saw all these women and coming out of the, her place, and they were not afraid, and the children were not afraid. And I went in, and when I went in, she picked you up and held you. And I knew she loved you right away. And while she was caring for you, I saw this picture up on the wall. And when she came out from caring for you, I asked her who this man was and who these children were that was, he was holding and that were, were around him. And she said, the medicine she gave me made you well. And she said, I will never forget what she said about this man. She said, this man is called the Lord Jesus Christ. And he came from heaven. And he lived on this earth. And he healed the sick. He loved the rich and the poor. And he even raised the dead. And she said, he came from heaven and was born as a baby and went to the cross to die for us to make it possible for everyone in the world to go to heaven to be with him. And she said, I shall never forget the words of this nurse. And I think because of her love for this man in the picture, that she will take Kinza and care for her. And he kept thinking, I, mom doesn't expect me to take Kinza to this woman. And she said, you, my son, must take her. And he looked and he said, but how, mother, how? He said, how will I know the way? I will be afraid in the dark. She said, Ali will care for you. He went to watch his goats that day, and she told him how he could go up the hills and down in the valleys by the river, by the little stream, and by in the valleys where he would know exactly where to go. He thought about every word she said all day long. He didn't forget one thing that she said. So while he's watching the goats, he's thinking that he must do this to save his little sister. He loved her that much. So that night, they all went to bed, just as they always did. After he was sure everyone was sound asleep, he slept outside. When he came outside, his mother was waiting with his little sister, Kinza. She tied little Kinza on his back and gave him bread to eat on the way. With tears in her eyes, she had faith that this little boy would take this sister to this nurse. You see, how much this boy loved his sister. We can think how much more God loved us when he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. He came down from heaven's glory. And when he came down, he came to give eternal life to every person in the world. He is no respecter of persons. He loves us all the same. For God so loved you today that are listening, that he gave his only begotten son, that if you believe in him, you will have everlasting life. Not only has he died for us, he's in heaven praying continually for us, and he's also promised he said in John 14, 2 and 3, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Not only is he praying night and day for us, he is preparing mansions for us that I have not seen nor ear heard the glories he has for us. And remember we said at the very beginning that the street is pure gold and the city's pure gold 
and we are to desire his word more than gold, than fine gold. How much do you love God's word? How much time do you spend in his word? Jesus Christ is there today, and he desires that every person in all the world be with him where he is. He says, I go to prepare a place for you, but there's one thing you must do before you will go to heaven. You must receive him as your savior. Since he is a gift, he must be received. So before you can do this, you must do what God's word says. Faith is just believing what God says he will do. He will save you today if you believe. Because God's word says, and God's word is the only true book in the world. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I can only get to heaven by simply believing that Jesus Christ has died for me, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He stayed on the earth for 40 days and went back to heaven. He's been there for almost 2,000 years. And we have the opportunity and the privilege of serving this wonderful Savior. And then we're going to be rewarded for all that we do after we become a child of God. So that's why we must desire to serve Him. He's serving us continually, night and day. And when you tune in next week, you're going to find out what happens to this little boy and his sister, Kinza. And I think we should do what God's Word says, to love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. I think that as you have heard this story, that as you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, it's going to be the greatest joy for you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior because you have His joy, His peace, and His love. And then you can serve Him faithfully. Jesus is the